Hi, I'm Michael. I have uh, grapheme color synesthesia, so I mix colors and numbers and letters. And I'm Sylvia, and I have synesthesia that mixes with taste and color as well as smell and color. So I specifically have chromesthesia. Um, synesthesia in general is a blending of your senses, so syn would be together and aesthesis would be your sensation. So with chromesthesia, that would be sound to color. I didn't realize that I had synesthesia until I met Michael, and he described his synesthesia. And I always thought, everyone thought garbage smelled green. I didn't know that that was something unusual. I was sitting in my dorm room, um, college dorm room, and uh, my roommate came in, she was taking a class, and she said, oh, I'm so jealous. Some musicians have this thing where they can, you know, see sound, like they can see a color with sound. How cool is that? And I was really confused, and I said, and doesn't everyone have that? One is really white, two is more like a navy color, three is a forest brown, four is pink, uh, five is burgundy, six is a more um, bright red, and seven is a kind of a pale yellow, eight is uh, purple, like a really dark purple, uh, nine is orange, and zero is clear, it doesn't really have a color for me. For example, garbage and green. Uh, green smells are usually associated with something that doesn't smell good to me, or with taste, things that taste purple are awful. Even if the food seems okay, if I'm tasting purple, I'm worried that the food's gone bad or something like that. Names will have colors, and it's not necessarily the same colors that are of each letter in the name, but the colors that stand out to me the most in the name. It sounds very fun to think that there's this kind of color wheel of a rainbow going on when I play a scale. So a scale um, in classical music is kind of like a group of notes that forms a sentence that's complete. So that is an octave, so the note here, D, we say is the same note. Um, in an octave, so one is higher than the other, but um, we consider we call it the same note because of the ratios and the frequencies of the sound waves. And for me, that's a very similar color. It's not exactly the same, although I think some people with chromesthesia will hear, feel, hear the same color with this, um, the same note of different octaves. So for me, lime green and kind of a darker green, respectively. Um, although I don't get a nice continual rainbow in between. For example, I'll start with D, which I consider green, as I said. The next note, E, I would think of as kind of a blue color, whereas then F is orange. I'm going to be tuning to an A, which is kind of an orangey yellow for me. So when I'm tuning and kind of switching the note around, it changes from different colors. Sometimes I, I don't, it's hard to pay attention to because it's just my perception of sound. It's not something I'm trying to do. Um, but I, it's, I can kind of hit some colors in my mind, but it's not uh, like a wave of one continual color. Really rarely um, unexpected sounds can also trigger uh, color for me. Like uh, the first time I ever heard a gunshot, it was like a rainbow. And I was asking everyone else, since I was very much younger, I was probably in uh, middle school, I was asking everyone, anyone else if they heard the rainbow. I think a lot more people have it than they realize. Like I said, I didn't know until my late 20s that I had it. And when did you learn? You when I learned about the term in college, that's when I, I figured I was like, oh yeah, that, that happens to me. And it turns out my mom also has the same sort of thing. And so she has the same thing as I do with colors and numbers, but her colors are completely different than my colors. Well, from what I understand, it's that there's um, a lack of complete synaptic pruning between different areas of the brain, so that there really is a, a neural connection in my brain between the concept of the number five and the color burgundy, for example. What I've heard is that there's series of, in development, um, in pruning, there's not as much cutting between the different um, cortices. So I definitely am associative, so um, 
uh, most people with synesthesia that I've heard with chromesthesia, let's say um, there's a flute playing one note. Um, someone with projective chromesthesia might actually see a blue line in space, um, whereas I might just say it feels kind of blue, um, like the color, and I don't really, it's very hard to explain because I don't see it, but I just feel the color. Yeah, it's, it's just in my mind. It's not, I don't see the, the color when I look at a number. I don't see the number as that color, but in my mind, that's the color that it's associated with. And it kind of drives me crazy if I see a color, if I see a number written mm. in a color mm -hmm. that's wrong to me. It, it looks, it just looks wrong. It's not always the same kind of color associated with the same kind of smell. And sometimes it's completely unusual. Like, um, I don't like whipped cream. To me, it tastes sort of a purpley, pink opalescence. You know, sometimes there's also a bit of a texture to it. Uh, it doesn't change. Every time I taste that one thing, it's the same color or the same association. But the kind of color I may have associated with a taste or a smell may be associated and may not. I know someone who has um, an association with color. Each color has a gender and a sex. And so she could, for example, play house with her crayons because brown might be a 16-year-old boy and purple might be a 40-year-old woman, you know. So they also have ages? Yes, they have age, they have gender. Um, they have personalities? Yeah. This ability gives you a perfect pitch, is that right? Uh, yes, um, for me, I believe it did help a lot. And you were saying this might make somebody a good sommelier or wine taster. Yes, exactly. If there was a way that I could make money off of this, <laughs> I think I would have to train more.